Hey guys, Sonix here, back with another video. Today I want to talk about event items. More specifically, I want to talk about unreleased event items. We've seen a number of in-game distribution items over the years. These usually unlock extra areas that aren't accessible in normal gameplay. The methods of distribution have varied over the years, from in-store downloads to Nintendo Wi-Fi, or more recently, with actual Pokemon withheld items. For various reasons, some of these events never make it to the public and go undistributed as their respective generation comes to a close. Why? Well, today I want to take a look at each and every item we know about only by looking at the game code and provide trainers with some clarity. So sit back, stop EV training, and enjoy. Number 6 GameStop Celebi Pokemon events in Generation 4 and 5 were distributed via cartridges, or at least local events. The events themselves would require players to visit the store which was chosen to host the event to download the gift. A host DS was placed on a counter in store with said cartridge to distribute the event via local wireless. During the time that Heart, Gold, Silver Silver were dying down and the focus was shifted towards black and white, Nintendo revealed that the legendary Johto beasts, and yes they are beasts, not dogs or hamsters or gerbils, were to be distributed in their shiny forms. Players could also receive a Celebi for their game too, after the event for the beasts had run. Let there be no, however, that until someone managed to get one of the cartridges from the store and take a closer look at it, there was a previously planned event called the GameStop Celebi. Here we have the actual distributed Celebi, and here is the scrapped Celebi. We also know this as some stores also received the cartridge early, allowing some confused players to obtain the previously scrapped Celebi. The Celebi itself is certified as legal by Nintendo and also has the exact same in-game effect by unlocking the Giovanni bonus in Heart Gold Soul Silver as well as Azora when transferred to Generation 5. It's not really known why this event was scrapped, as the Celebi was released only a few weeks later but came with a different cartridge. Weird. Number 5. The GS Ball Made famous by its appearance in the anime, the GS Ball is an event-only item unique to Pokemon Crystal. The GS Ball is used to activate an in-game event which allows the player to encounter the mythical Pokemon Celebi. As a child, the Ilex Forest Shrine confused me as the NPCs often reference the Forest Protector. So many years later after discovering the GS Ball, I was quite annoyed this never saw a release. Why didn't they release it? Well, they did technically, just very obscurely. The GS Ball was available if you were to obtain a mobile phone adapter and a Japanese version of Pokemon Crystal. The Goldenrod Pokemon Center was actually the Pokemon Communication Center in the Japanese version. This allowed players to share the data to other trainers all over Japan. This event allowed players to receive the GS Ball, take it to Kurt, allow a data pass, and then place it in the shrine. Yeah, confusing I know. Well actually, it proved to be a very popular event in Japan. It's amazing to think that the Generation 2 games actually allowed internet access and events. It's not actually known why this event was scrapped in localised versions, and I wasn't able to find much information on why the Pokemon Communication Center was removed entirely from versions outside of Japan. My best guess is probably something to do with the adapter itself, which was needed to obtain the event. Perhaps it was seen as too expensive to manufacture, and Game Freak didn't foresee much profit outside of Japan. Who knows really for sure. All I can say is that this frustrated me. A Celebi distribution wasn't really widespread until Generation 4, a decade after its initial reveal. The GS ball in the anime was completely forgotten about too. Maybe Game Freak thought we'd forget. Well, we didn't Game Freak. We didn't. Number 4. The Azor Flute. The Azor Flute brings back some very frustrating and impatient memories. In fact, this may well be the most famous entry on the list. In each Sinnoh game, an item called the Azor Flute is available, which unlocks the mythical Pokemon Arceus in the Hall of Origin. To have the chance to take on the god of all Pokemon is probably the highlight of the generation, and many players, including myself, couldn't wait for the chance to take it on. However, the Azor Flute never saw a distribution. When Black and White were announced, players began to speculate as to whether we would ever actually see the release of the Azor Flute. What were Game Freak planning? It wasn't unheard of for events to be released after a new generation. For example, in Generation 4, several Game Boy Advance events still ran, such as the Aura Mew, Mitsuru and Celebi, and the Pokepark Jirachi via the DS download play for Fire Red, Leaf Green and Emerald. The Azor Flute never saw a release, meaning that Arceus itself was locked at specific events for the Pokemon itself. We received no explanation as to why this flute was never released until Junichi Masuda revealed in an interview with Nintendo World Report in 2013 that the Azor Flute was thought to be too confusing for players to use, leading to a decision not to distribute it. 
I'm not really sure why they thought the event was too confusing, as, at least to me, it doesn't seem any more confusing than other item distributions in the same generation, such as the member card, Oak's letter, and the secret key. Number 3. Poké Jabs The Poké is again relating to the 4th generation. It's a handy little device that mimics a smartphone in-game, allowing players to make use of applications that are relevant in certain situations. These range from incredibly useful to downright strange, however it did prove to be a very popular feature, and one that many people wish would return to the series one day. There are a total of 25 in-game apps, however 23 of which are accessible without the use of hacking. Two additional apps of the 23 made available do exist in the game's data, that were never released. There was only one distributed app for Diamond and Pearl in the matchup checker, though this was included in-game for Pokemon Platinum. Two others however, the stopwatch and the alarm clock, were for some reason or another never provided to the public. The DS does in fact have an alarm feature built in, so the app itself was perhaps seen as obsolete, leading to a decision not to distribute it. The stopwatch however does potentially hold some use, though maybe not so relevant to your Pokemon adventure. The Poketch app has a ton of beta artwork which you can view in the description below. It does seem as if the development of the feature changed a lot, so a decision not to release or include certain apps isn't really overly surprising. Number 2. Altering Cave There's a good chance that you guys have never actually heard of this particular event, but it exists in the data of all generation 3 games minus Ruby and Sapphire. Upon completion of Emerald as well as Fire Red Leaf Green, a strange cave appears on Route 102 in Hoenn and on Outcast Island in Kanto. If you enter the cave, you'll find nothing but Zubat. This puzzled players for years, until eventually it was revealed that it was intended to be an event that would activate rare and variable Pokemon inside. If you were to visit a Nintendo Wonder Spot, you could download a ticket into your game that activates the changing Pokemon once received. The Wonder Card for the events is the following. For unknown reasons, this event went unreleased. One important factor, however, is the type of Pokemon you can encounter once the event is activated. Mareep, Ipom, Pineco, Shuckle, Tadiasa, Houndour, Stantler, and Smeargle. These Pokemon are all available in Emerald version, rendering the event distribution essentially obsolete. It's possible that the Safari Zone extension was perhaps not originally planned, and it turned out to be a late inclusion, essentially meaning they had to scrap the event. These Pokemon, however, prior to the release of Emerald were unobtainable, so the year and a half after Fire Red Leaf Green must have been anxious for completing your Pokédex. There are some sources, however, which suggest that obtaining other events such as the Aurora Ticket and a Mystic Ticket would also activate the Altering Cave event, though this has never been confirmed. The Altering Cave event is probably one of the most cryptic on this list, and one that many players are still discussing today. Number 1. The Old Seema to date, this is probably the rarest and most exclusive event item that Nintendo have ever ran. Mew. It's a Pokemon that captures our imaginations, and despite it being by far the most distributed Pokemon since the dawn of time, there's something about Mew itself that makes us want this apparent rare Pokemon. Much like the GS ball for Pokemon Crystal, Emerald also has an exclusive item in the code. The old sea map allows players to encounter the mythical Pokemon Mew on Faraway Island. It was distributed to players who attended the Pokefesta event in 2005, but unfortunately never made a release outside of Japan. The event does exist in all copies and languages of Pokemon Emerald, though any attempt to reach the island will result in an illegitimate Mew. Only Japanese Mew from Far Away Island can be passed as legal. It's a crying shame that this event never actually saw a release, as it does hold some of the most incredible backstory, including Mr. Fuji. There's a sign on the island with rubbed out text, though it's thought to say, If any human being sets foot here again, let it be a kind-hearted person. With that hope, I depart. Again, it's not really known why this event never saw release, though its translations suggest that it eventually did plan to. Mew did see many events during Generation 3, so it's possible that they just decided to leave the event undistributed as a result. Thanks for watching the video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about distributed items that never were. If you would like to know more about the games, please consider subscribing for weekly videos. If you have any suggestions for topics, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, take care.